Okay, so picking up from where we last thought left off, we have our basic uh, stage set up with our little light gray background. See from here, so nothing very exciting. So now we'll put something on. So for previously, before we had our player PNG, we created in paint. So we'll put that onto the stage now. First things first, we create a, a, a player variable, which I did already here. So let player, and then now we will now use it. So player equals new pixie dot sprite dot from, and we'll use our images slash player dot png, just like that. So now we have it. Uh, well, things that are, the things that we got to do next is you have to set the anchor point for the sprite. Uh, by default, it's going to be the upper left corner, and that's not great for transformations and stuff. So we will actually set the to it to the center. So I'll do a player dot uh, see anchor dot set and I'll do 0 0.5. That will make the center the anchor point the center of our sprite. Next thing we want to do is we want to put it somewhere, right? So let's put it in the center of the screen. So I'll say player dot x equals. We'll use our view and we'll use the width of the view divided by two, and then we'll do the same thing for y equals app dot view dot height divided by two and then uh, lastly what I do is once we create it we have to actually put it put it onto the stage itself so we'll do an app dot stage dot add child but not, not to be confused with append child and we'll hit player all right just like that so here we are so we created a player object all right from a sprite all right we hit the anchor point set its positioning uh, to the views height and width divided by two and then we add it to the stage okay and once you hit save and then go back to here you'll see that there it is so look at the deb debugger here no errors and so our guys on the screen so it's not very exciting you can't do anything with it yet so now we want to basically add some interactions with it so we'll use the we'll actually do some mouse work now so first things first um let's just you know add some comments to make it look nice object and now it's uh let's see here mouse interactions so first things first we have to basically set up the uh, stage to accept interactivity okay so down here we'll do an app dot stage dot interactive all right equals true all right and then we'll do an app dot stage we'll add an event now on all right pointer move okay and we're gonna call a function move player all right so what we have here then is that we told the stage that it accepts interactivity and that we have an a, a event for a pointer move that we'll call this move player function. So now we get to declare the function. So function move player. We'll pass in a parameter e for the event because that's going to be important. And then now we uh, we'll need to get the positioning. So uh, e is going to be we'll interrogate it in a minute, but e basically will have a whole lot of data that uh, is regarding the event that was triggered by our pointer move but we want to get the positioning so we can just basically move our sprite to the position of the mouse so we can do let's just store this as pos for position and we'll do e dot data dot global all right and then we will do a player dot x equals pause dot x player dot y equal pause dot y okay and um so with that and save it and let's see what happens so go back to here and bring our debugger up and we'll see that nothing happens why ah okay i spelled interactive wrong so gotta love javascript's ability to not error on me or active active so now save that go back again and there we go so now i put a breakpoint there and so I put a breakpoint earlier, and now um, actually let's take the breakpoint off and let it go first. So here, so now we can see that the sprite now moves along with the mouse. All right, that's great. So that's what's happening with, with this pause thing here. So if I roll over here, it breaks over here, and if you look at E, you see that E is a enormous object full of stuff. All right, but you know, E dot data is the one that we want, and inside here you see it's global, all those other events, and it's a pointer event. You see that? And the part we want is global. And you see that right now, it got as my mouse is sort of off the screen, but you see that the X and Y are in there. And so that's the data we want. So we set that to this e.data.global to get the X and Y. And then basically we can assign the player object to that. And that gives us the ability to then move this around and have the sprite follow the mouse cursor, which is really kind of handy. So there you have it, a quick look at using mouse interactivity 
uh, to basically get a sprite to follow along the mouse. Uh, we'll add. We'll continue looking at other interactive methods like the keyboard and some maybe more advanced mouse uh, mouse methods uh, in future videos.